I bought an HP laptop with Windows on Black Friday for $219, just so I can convert it to Linux. Let's get into it. I needed another test computer for my YouTube videos, but I didn't want to pay a lot of money for it. I found one on Black Friday that I was actually a little impressed for the stats and what I was looking for. I paid 219 bucks for this HP laptop with Windows. Now I've already done some videos on how to set up a new Windows laptop with bypassing the Microsoft account. And then we did another video on how to upgrade the memory and debloat Windows on the new laptop. And now I'm gonna do what I actually intended to do in the beginning. I'm gonna convert the new laptop to Linux. Now for this video, I'm going to do a clean install of Linux on the new laptop, completely removing Windows and all of the included software. So if you're following along with this video, keep in mind that if you do this, Windows will be gone and you can't restore it. We're gonna jump right in. You will need a USB flash drive with at least eight gigabytes of free space and preferably another PC that's not the new one that you just purchased in order to download Linux and create the bootable media that we need. If you do not have another option and need to use the new Windows laptop to create the installation media, then you will need to power it up, go through the entire Windows setup and all that stuff just to create your bootable media so that you can wipe all that out. If you need a video on how to set up that new PC, make sure you check out the first video we did on this laptop and I'll link that below. I happen to like Linux Zorin OS 18, so that's what we'll be installing today. But first, I've got to keep the lights on, so check out today's sponsor. Are you using an unregistered version of Windows 11? Then you need to check out Keyspan.com. Keyspan offers a wide range of products, including Windows 11, Windows 10, and even older versions like Windows 7. Need all this software? They got you covered with keys for Office 2019 and Office 2021. And here's the best part. You can save big with exclusive coupon codes by using my code RKT50 to get 50% off all Windows series. That means you can get Windows 11 Pro for less than $20. But wait, there's more. For Microsoft Office, use my code RKT62 to get a massive 62% off. Buying is super easy. Just add your chosen product key to your cart, apply the coupon code, and pay securely via PayPal or credit card. You'll receive your genuine activation key in no time. Once you have your product key, go back to the activation page, click on change product key, enter the product key you just purchased, and click activate. Be sure to check out keysfan.com. Real quick, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. It helps me out tremendously and it gets my videos out to more people. Thank you and let's get back to the video. From a browser of your choosing, we are gonna first go grab Rufus. I'm just gonna type in Rufus in my search box here. And I'm gonna go to this one right here, rufus.ie. Now it's important here that you only click on what I click on. There may be some ads and things that pop up depending on what browser you're using but we're gonna scroll down here to where it says latest releases under download. And you can grab either of these, the EXE or the 11p.exe, which is just the portable version, the one I prefer. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And then I'm going to tell it to save to my downloads folder. And I'm gonna click save. And you'll see that that is downloading up here in the top right hand corner. And as soon as it gets completed, and you'll see that that has completed up here in the top right hand corner. And now I'm gonna go back to my home screen and I'm gonna type in Zorin OS 18 and hit enter. And that's gonna take me right here to Zorin.com OS. I'm gonna come over here to the download screen. There is a pro version. What the pro version does is it just gives you some additional layouts and it pre-installs a bunch of software that you can do on your own for free. But what it does do is help out the developers. So by all means, if you want to download the pro version, you could certainly do that. I'm going to download the core version here. So I'm gonna to go to download. You do not have to enter your email. Just go to skip to download here. And again, it's gonna ask me where I want to download that. I'm also gonna download that one to my downloads folder. I'm gonna click save. 
and that is downloading up in the top right hand corner and the downloads about three and a half gigs i will skip forward until it's complete now that the download is complete i'm going to close out my browser i'm going to open up my downloads folder and you can see here i have rufus and i have zord i'm going to go ahead and double click on rufus i'm going to say yes to the user account controls i'm going to allow rufus to do updates all right and from this screen here i'm going to click yes to this update i'm going to keep the default settings but if you happen to be on an older computer that has mbr selected you need to change that to gpt if you're creating this for the new pc if you're on the new pc it will default to gpt it has recognized my flash drive up top so right here under select i'm going to go select the zorin os iso I'm going to keep the default settings that it's created here. I'm going to change this to GPT. I'm going to leave the other options at their defaults and I'm going to click start. It's going to come up with this message and I'm just going to click OK. It's now warning me that it's going to remove data on the flash drive. I'm going to click OK. And now Rufus has started the process. I will skip forward until Rufus has completed. OK, now that Rufus is done, we're going to go ahead and close that out. Next, we're going to boot into the flash drive we just created, but we need to do a couple of things. I'm going to first, after reboot, I'm going to start tapping the escape key, which will put me into my BIOS settings. I'm going to go ahead and disable secure boot. Now, Zorin OS does support secure boot, but there are some additional steps that you have to take, and then you do run a risk of getting some boot errors. I'm going to bypass all of that and just disable secure boot for this installation. Make your own choice there. So I'm going to go ahead now and click the restart button. And then once it restarts, I will start tapping my escape key. That may be different for your system. It could be F1, F2, delete. But if you have an HP, escape will get you there. Okay, my video capture device did not capture this piece. So I'm going to film it directly from the laptop. So apologies for that. But from your main setup screen, there was a screen prior to this and there was an option to enter by setup. So just select that option, you'll end up here. Then I'm gonna come over here to boot. I'm gonna make sure USB boot is enabled, which it is. And then I'm gonna come down here to secure boot and disable. And I'm gonna come down here to clear all secure boot keys. And it's gonna make me enter the passcode, which is 3756 plus enter. And now I'm gonna go over one menu and go to save changes and exit. Once it starts to reboot, I'm gonna begin tapping F9 to bring up the boot menu. All right, from the boot menu, I'm gonna select the second option, which is to boot from my flash drive, press enter. And on this screen, if you have an NVIDIA graphics chip, use the third option down. I do not on this PC, so I'm gonna use the first option. Okay, from this screen, you have two options, try Zorin OS, which allows you to try it from the flash drive without making any changes to your system. But we are here to wipe out Windows completely, so I'm going to go to the next option, which is install Zorin OS. Okay, on the next screen, we are going to confirm our keyboard layout of English and English, and I'm going to click continue. And on this screen, I'm going to keep the first Two boxes check that's download updates while in store in Zorin OS and install third party software for graphics and Wi Fi hardware in additional media formats. And I'm going to not click this one to don't participate in the census that just gives them anonymous information about who's participating. And I'm going to click continue. Okay, now I need to explain this part. I've had to come back and re record this because my recording device was not recording when I did this step the first time. So you see this message here that says this computer currently has no detected operating system. What would you like to do? That is because I'm doing this for the second time. Normally there would be an option here where you could install Linux alongside the Windows Boot Manager and Dual Boot, which we would not be selecting for this anyway. I will do a future video on that. It looks just like this. I'll put a screenshot up here of what the menu looks like when you have an operating system. We're going to select the option. This was the second option. It's now the first, but to erase the disk and install Zorin OS. I'm going to click install now. This is just warning you that the, the disk will be erased and new partitions will be created. And I'm going to go continue. 
On this screen, we're just confirming our time zone. And on this screen, we will need to put in our name, computer name, and username. And I'm gonna put in a password, and I'm gonna confirm. And I'm gonna select this option to log in automatically and click continue. We will skip forward until this installation is complete. Okay, now that the installation is complete, we're gonna go ahead and restart and we will boot into Zorin OS. And first we have to remove the installation media and then press enter. All right, and now we are booted into Zorin OS. If you take a look down here at the bottom right, you got your clock. I'm connected to Wi-Fi over here to the left. You can explore the different software, look at what's installed already on the system. I'm up to date because I enabled updates while installing. I'm not gonna do a full tour of Zorin OS. I've done that in a previous video and I will link that below also. It will basically pick up here and walk you through all the features of Zorin OS. But what I want to do mainly here is make sure that all my hardware's working properly. I want to make sure that my Bluetooth adapter is working, and it is. It's picking up Bluetooth items around my house already. Make any changes to your resolution. Front, right, front, left. And my volume's working on both speakers, so no issues with my sound drivers. I'll come over here and take a brief look at appearance. This gives you an option of four different layouts. I'm going to stick with the default one. If you want additional ones, you can pay for the pro version if that means something to you. Under theme, I'm going to select a dark theme for myself. I'm going to select some icons to appear on the desktop. All of my hardware seems to be working. We've got our utilities, we've got our system tools, and we've got Windows app support. If you want to run some Windows applications on Zorin OS 18, no, you can't run Office 365 or the Adobe Creative Suite because they're what's known as click to run applications where they are heavy dependent on being connected to those servers so they can constantly authenticate, which is part of the problem with Microsoft and Adobe. You can't just download and install software on your computer when it comes to them. But any software that you use that has an actual installer package where you download it to your computer and you own it, a lot of that stuff will run on wine and bottles. I also did a video on that. You can check that one out if you're interested in setting up some Windows apps on your Linux computer. You can also take the tour. I did not. Another thing you can do under settings, if you must access your Microsoft accounts, you can actually set them up in Zorin. You can come here to online accounts. You can click on your Google account, your Microsoft account, and you can set those up, which will allow you access to OneDrive and the online versions of Office 365 with your Excel, Word, PowerPoint, etc. However, you do have Office options here, like LibreOffice, which is the one that I prefer, which is right here, and you have LibreOffice pre-installed, but there's all kind of other software apps you can go get. If you come here under Explore, there's plenty of different categories and a ton of different free and open source software that may work for you. I've done a ton of videos on these, so please check that out on my channel. Again, I'm not going to do a deep dive of all the feature and software in this video because I've done that before. I'll be sure to link that video below so you can watch that one. And that's all for this video. And there you have it, a brand new HP laptop converted to Linux. Let me know if you want to see that video where I dual boot Windows and Linux on the new laptop, and I'll do that one next. Also, drop your comments below if this is something you think you will do. Do me a favor, please like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. Subscribing to the channel helps me out a lot. It helps me grow the channel so I can continue to bring you content just like this on a weekly basis. Don't forget to check out some of these other video suggestions. And as always, thank you for watching and until next time.